Welcome back to another episode of the Unlearning Podcast. My name is Ashley Lynn Hankst, and I am so excited you are here joining me on this unlearning journey. The Unlearning Podcast is all about helping you learn to love Jesus and your neighbor through healthy, life-giving theology. Each week, I bring you compelling topics and powerful Bible stories and things to think about as you deconstruct the toxic theology of your Christian evangelical faith. There has been a lot going on in my life and in our world at large these last few weeks, and so I've been on a bit of a break. On today's episode, I'm going to share some of these big life events with you, as well as some thoughts on all that's happening in the world at large. And finally, I'm going to end this episode with some exciting news about two new segments I am starting on this show, on the Unlearning Podcast. And so you're going to want to listen to the very, very end of this episode to get the full scoop of what's going on. And so if you're new to this show, thank you for checking it out. The Unlearning Podcast is all about helping you gently deconstruct the evangelical Christian faith. It's not about throwing out the baby with the bathwater, but about examining the bathwater, applying filters and sanitizing it and taking supplements. Okay, so maybe that metaphor goes only goes so far, but I think you get the picture. We aren't just ta- taking the bad parts out of the Christian faith. I want to help you rebuild a Christian faith that feels right to you, that doesn't put you in therapy and that doesn't make your life worse, but makes your life better. That means in addition to the Bible, we will be learning from black feminists, modern psychologists, and at times other religions to form a spirituality that is healthy and life-giving. Every episode is an offering, something to think about and something to consider Now, I'm done with theological ultimatums. You can absolutely disagree with me. I want you to disagree with me and to think critically about your faith. And so if that sounds even remotely interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and to join our community on this unlearning journey. I am so excited to be back to share with you some big life updates, some big blessings in my life. I recently graduated from seminary with my Master of Divinity degree from Claremont School of Theology. At this ceremony, I was granted the Jean Autry Powers Award for Excellence in Gender and Sexuality. If you aren't familiar with Jean Autry Powers, she was a powerhouse minister in the United Methodist Church for a very long time, and she was one of the very first women ordained. It was such an honor to receive this award. I definitely share it with you all my listeners, being able to go alongside you on this journey of deconstruction has given me the opportunity to ask challenging questions about gender and sexuality and the vast array of topics that we go over. I often think about you all as I prepare this podcast. I even think about you as I struggle through how to say things in a healthy way. And so thank you for being on this journey with me. And thank you for all of your love and support along the way. This kind of gentle deconstruction and reconstruction is important work if the church is going to survive and be of any good to the 21st century world. And so I'm incredibly grateful to be part of it. While on this podcasting break, my wife and I traveled internationally for the first time since March 2020. And on this trip, we visited a family friend in Guadalajara, Mexico. Now, you have to understand that prior to going to Guadalajara, a city in Mexico where Mexicans actually live and work and raise their families, it's not a city centered around tourism. Uh, Prior to going to Guadalajara, my only experience with this amazing, beautiful country was Cancun. Through the all-inclusive, always comfortable, ever so convenient resort scene of Cancun, being in a city that was not centered on tourism where Mexican people actually live and worked and raised their babies was a very new experience for me. Looking back, I don't think I've ever visited a a, a Latinx country where I didn't go to the tourist part. Always a tourist I am and never a traveler. And so traveling to Guadalajara made me realize something. It made me realize how much we experienced vacation through colonization. Like, I never really thought about that until this trip. Whenever I visited Cancun, I got a highly curated experience where Mexican food and Mexican culture was presented to me for my consumption. 
Mexico's food and culture were tailored to affirm my American interests and sensibilities. In Cancun, we can just take, 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 and take from the Mexican people for our enjoyment. But when I was in Guadalajara with my wife and her friend, it was completely different. We were in their world, experiencing their culture, drinking at their bars, eating their food, and doing it all in their space, in their universe. My wife and I were there, and we were the outsiders, We were, and we were bending to fit into their world. We had to follow their rules. We weren't there to consume their culture. Yes, we went sightseeing and made the trek out to Tequila. For anyone unfamiliar with Mexico, there is an, actually a small town called Tequila in the Mexican state of Jalisco, where they grow blue agave plants that are used to make tequila. But even while I was there, the majority of the people who were quote unquote tourists in tequila were Mexicans from other states. We weren't colonizing anything. We were living in their world, immersed in their space and following their rules. And it felt so much more life-giving than a completely air-conditioned experience in Cancun. Now, I don't think it's morally wrong to visit Cancun or to participate in tourism, but I do think we need to think about the ways that we participate in tourism and ask ourselves if we are participating in colonization. We need to examine our attitude about the people whose food and culture we are consuming. Do we uphold their dignity? Do we respect locals as equals, honoring their culture and their food that we have the the, the sheer privilege of experiencing? Do we submit ourselves to their rules and their customs, even if their rules are resort rules? Or do we just take and take and take and do whatever we want and get overly critical and judgmental of the locals serving us? I'm sure we could talk a lot more about this issue, but just for today, if you have summer vacation plans, especially in a foreign country, please think about your attitude as you engage in tourism Are you participating in colonization or are you a respectful traveler whom anyone would welcome? In addition to graduating from seminary and visiting Mexico, I finished my nine-month pastoral internship at Pasadena Presbyterian Church, and so that was a huge blessing for me. For about nine months, I was a pastoral intern at Pasadena Presbyterian Church, and I learned so much about ministry and community from them. I was shadowing their lead pastor, and it was just such a wonderful experience. I am so, so grateful. The last personal update I want to share with you is about an upcoming sermon series I'm doing in the last half of June. If you're in the Los Angeles area on June 19th and 26th, I am preaching a two-part sermon series called Pleasure and Purity, Healthy Christian Sexual Ethics. Yes, you guessed it. The name Pleasure and Purity is a pun on Elizabeth Elliot's passion and purity. If you or someone you know has been affected by the purity culture in any way, you're going to want to check this out. This is also going to be a great sermon series for anyone with children or youth for parents thinking about how they might talk about sexuality. And so if you're in the area, come check it out. I would love to see you and to hear about your unlearning journey. Now, those are all the updates for me. I want I want to take some time to really say a few words about the recent tragic events that have happened. I know that there has been a lot of terrible things happening in the life of our country these past few weeks, with the grocery store shooting in the African-American neighborhood to the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. It's so, so heartbreaking. And with the pending Supreme Court decision that could possibly turn back women's reproductive rights, we're living in a stressful time. The only thing I can offer you, the only encouragement I have is the encouragement to act. We can pray to calm our anxiety, but that sense of peace will only last for a moment. We must act. We must get out there and get involved and protest and educate ourselves and engage in community grassroots activism. It's not enough to pray. Praying won't make these issues go away. We really must act. Our patriarchal culture tells us that there are three topics you should never bring up in conversation. Three things that you should never really talk about. And you know it, sex, politics, and religion. Well, I believe that we need to go against that boundary and do all that we can to talk about and change the harmful aspects of sex, politics, and religion. 
In the words of the modern day prophet Andre Henry, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. And if we get involved and become part of creating change, things will change for the better. If that sounds hokey to you, like change is so impossible, just remember the fact that slavery was abolished and women, women can vote and LGBT people have the right to marry and become clergy. Just remember the fact that I graduated with my master of divinity. There are so many things in our society that have to change, that have to change for the better. But we need to remember that when we become overwhelmed, that so much has already changed. If the news is really hard to watch or read, check out NPR's daily podcast called Up First. I listen to it each morning on my morning commute. It's a 15-minute bite-sized roundup of all the important news and events of the day. And it's not, it's not emotionally manipulative. It's NPR's Up First. Now that I'm done with seminary, I want to get more involved with local politics. I want to learn about how I can volunteer and serve on committees where local and national politics are being played out. Maybe committee work is not your thing, but you love to serve or help out at phone banks. Whatever it is, just get involved. There's so much going on in the world around us. Instead of getting overwhelmed, do your best to get involved. You don't need to know every single detail about every single issue you are passionate about to do something about it. Don't fall into the trap of worshiping knowledge and logic. Just learn what you can, do what you can, and ask God to bless your efforts. Before I end this episode, I want to share a brief update on the Unlearning podcast on this show. I'm excited to announce that we are going to launch two new segments to the Unlearning podcast show. So in addition to the weekly episode of Gentle Deconstruction, we're going to have a weekly episode on Gentle Reconstruction called Friday Field Notes. Every Friday, I'm going to share with you some thoughts on how to rebuild your faith and how to grow as a person. Think of it as reconstruction with personal development. I've heard personal development phrased as self-optimization, and I like that. So think of this as reconstruction with self-optimization. These Friday shows are going to be strictly about how to rebuild your faith and rebuild your life. And so you're not going to want to miss it. I have yet to find a personal development podcast that both provides personal development tips and ideas and incorporates healthy Christian progressive Christianity. And so I hope that this Friday Field Notes will satisfy that need and will be just that, my Field Notes from my journey of recovery. The second new segment that I'm going to launch that I'm especially excited about is called The Briefing, News and Events from a Progressive Christian Point of View. Conservative evangelical leader Albert Moeller hosts a daily show called The Briefing, News and Events from a Christian Worldview. And although he calls himself a Christian, he's probably more Southern Baptist, and he's got a deeply Southern Baptist agenda. It's incredibly toxic, and I don't judge him for it. I know he's just coming from his point of view. But this new segment that I'm going to produce It's not meant to be disrespectful. It's meant to be a counterpart, a monthly segment, a monthly show to help you think critically about the latest news. Well, that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for staying to the very, very end. I'm so grateful for your constant love and support. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss a beat. Until next time, my name is Ashley Lynn Hangst, and you are listening to The Unlearning Podcast.